Celsus. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Gospel reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 17. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. Good morning and it's good to be with you once again on this seventh Sunday of Easter, uh, otherwise known as the Sunday after the Ascension. Because of course uh, Thursday uh, was Ascension Day and next week we look forward to the birthday of the Church and we wish ourselves a happy birthday on the Feast of Pentecost. <clears throat> and so I give you advance warning, you might like to have a glass of something perhaps and a piece of cake ready for next Sunday. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Those words which we heard a little earlier in our reading from the Acts of the Apostles are words which are charged with power. In his commentary on the Acts of the Apostles, the biblical scholar Joseph Fitzmaier says that this is the programmatic verse of Acts. He says this because it sets the scope of the spread of the word of God the goal that the commissioned apostles are to attain as they bring that word from Jerusalem, quite literally, to the ends of the earth. And in fact, this verse might also be said to set the programme for the Christian life. We who are followers of the risen Christ are also called to be his witnesses wherever we go and wherever we find ourselves. Yet this commission was not just for the apostles. If that were so, the witnessing would have come to an end centuries ago when the last of the apostles died. The commission is actually for us all. The commission is for all of us who are called through our baptism to be part of that royal priesthood of all believers. Just as Jesus said, follow me, he also said, be my witnesses. So that is precisely what we're about as Christians. And what is a witness anyway? 
Well, a dictionary definition says one who has seen or heard something and who can give evidence for its occurrence. Another definition uh, says one who signs her or his name to a document for the purpose of attesting to its authenticity. But then how are we living in the 21st century in a place that the apostles never even heard of to be witnesses to something that happened 2000 years ago in a place many of us have probably never seen? Yes, we've heard the words of scripture, we know the story, but does that make us witnesses? Can we give evidence of the occurrence of these things? After all, we weren't even there. Let's look more closely at what Jesus said. It's true that the apostles have been witnesses to all that Jesus said and did during his earthly ministry. But what Jesus says in today's reading is, you will be my witnesses. Our testimony is about him, not just about what happened a long time ago and in a far distant place. We are to give evidence about what we are ourselves have heard, have seen and have experienced. We can't be witnesses unless we've met the risen Christ, unless our lives have been transformed by him. Only when we can speak of the presence of God in our lives and in the world around us, then and only then can we be his witnesses. And yet this is something that we as Christians probably do a lot more often than we realise. St Francis of Assisi put it well when he said, Proclaim the gospel at all times, and when necessary, use words. How many people in our own life have been witnesses to us? Not just in words, but by deeds too. Who have been the figures in our lives who have inspired us and encouraged us, both by their word and by their example? in our life in Christ. We're called to do the same, and this call is not just issued to us individually, but also, as, also to us as members of the body of Christ, the Church. We should be seriously considering how we are called in this place and at this time to be Christ's witnesses. Possibly we don't think of ourselves in that way. Nevertheless, if Jesus calls us to be witnesses, then we need to prepare ourselves for just that. But what do we need to do? How can we get started? It would appear from today's reading that two things are necessary. First of all, of course, we can do nothing through our own power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, Jesus said to his apostles. As we await the glorious feast of Pentecost next Sunday, let us pray earnestly for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on all of us, both corporately as members of the Church and individually too. It is only when we are clothed with power from on high that we can do the work that Christ calls us to do. The second thing that we must do is reflected towards the end of the reading from Acts. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The communal prayer and harmony reflected in the story from the Acts of the Apostles should serve as a model for our own church communities. Any disunity in the body of Christ will always be an obstacle to the effectiveness of the witness that we bear. As the Lord Jesus prayed on the night before he died, that we might all be one, so we must pray and act as one. God's call comes to each one of us. What is he specifically calling you to do? And just as importantly, how are you going to respond? Amen. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, and it's been good to be with you once again this week. As I said, next week we celebrate the great feast of Pentecost, when we give thanks for and pray for the continued outpouring of the Holy Spirit. As I said, it's also uh, technically the birthday of the Church. And so if you'd uh, 
like to join me with a glass of something uh, next Sunday morning uh, with cake, uh, then that would be absolutely wonderful. You might think that 9.30 in the morning is uh, too early for that, but uh, just pretend it's also the effects of the Holy Spirit on you. Bless you all. Bye-bye. The Collect for the Seventh Sunday of Easter Risen Ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, fill your church on earth with power and compassion, that all who are estranged by sin may find forgiveness and know your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.